Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Wave podcast here at the Culture Wave Media Network. And we are back to discuss another film that is out worldwide now for you guys to check out. And we got to check out at opening night at the Montclair Film Festival. It is a movie called Conclave. It stars Ray Fine, Stanley Tucci, John Lithgow, Isabella Rosalini. Um, a bunch of other people are in this film, and it's directed by Edward Berger who also directed um, Best Picture nominee, All Quiet on the Western Front. I believe it was last year. Yes. Um, I am one of your hosts. My name is Darian Scalamoni. I am joined this time by Zach Miller. How's it going? Zach saw this movie at Montclair. I unfortunately uh, could not make it, but I did see this movie in theaters when it was released this past weekend um, as of this recording. And this is a movie that's getting a lot of buzz. Um, we are Oscar pundits here. We love discussing the award season every year as big cinephiles and film fans. And this is one that you had to check out because of how much sort of talk there was around this movie. Um, again, this is the follow up to All Quiet on the Western Front for Edward it's, Berger. It's actually two years ago. Sorry. Two years ago. Two years okay. Ago. So this is the follow up for Edward Berger. Berger was at the festival. Um, and he did a Q and I afterwards and Zach also got to meet him. Um, so if Zach, you want to discuss just what that interaction was like with Edward before we sort of dive into the oh, film yeah. in general, that was really cool. Um, he, cause it was like right after, uh, the Q and a that he did with Tom Hall and, uh, some other people and Montclair, uh, he was just, you know, talking about the film a lot and what he likes to do with his movies. Um, this was to everybody. This wasn't mm -hmm. to me. But he was he was just kind of saying um, he likes to challenge himself and do something different from the last film that he does. So he was like, you know, I we did the war epic remake of All Quiet on the Western Front and he wanted to do something in a different direction with doing Conclave and just focus on a almost political drama of the inheritance of a pope and the the voting system and the mudslinging and that kind of thing so um this is a phenomenal film and he really challenges himself by doing different stuff but he i like to see a um a director adapt to different stories and different things um but yeah i literally like caught him walking past me at one point i was like i gotta say something to him it was so cool he was like the nicest guy like he is um such a cool guy he was very happy to be in montclair he's like oh this reminds me so much of little uh european town and stuff like that he's like oh it's, it's not as nice as europe but it's nice <laughs> it was funny um but he was uh i was like you know like western front really meant a lot to me and some other people and um this was a phenomenal film too and and he was like super thankful and stuff too it was it was really nice um he could tell that he was like very uh warmed by just a comment from anybody you know mm -hmm. so he's 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 a great director uh great person and it was very nice to get a little moment to talk to him but his q a afterwards was great so um but yeah and then what's your, what are your first thoughts on the movie what were the first things that you were thinking of was this anything different from what you expected yeah so this was a movie that again so i'm i will be 100 percent upfront about it i don't know if i would have gone and seen this this wouldn't have been one that i rushed out to see if there wasn't so much great talk about it because these sorts of films not i i like political dramas but things dealing in religion and stuff like that aren't always like my go-to like mm -hmm. it's not something usually i i head out to the theaters and go and see and something like this but um burger being the director of this but on top of that the the cast i mean ray fine is somebody that um i just think he's so underappreciated i think oh, yeah. that when you discuss some of like the greatest actors he like, I think everybody knows he's great. And I think that everyone recognizes him obviously for being Voldemort, which makes a lot of sense, but there's other things like he's just in, he's in so many films that I love. Um, the namely, like I'm a huge fan of in Bruges, which mm. is a Martin McDonough film. And I think he's so incredible in that film with, with Colin Farrell and Brennan Gleeson. Yeah. And he sort of, um, stars in this movie as the conclave, to this major election after the Pope dies. And I will say, I thought this film was a lot more riveting than I thought it was going to be. And yes. I think going into what you were talking about too, how it, it really does feel like a political drama with these different 
sort of political parties at hand, essentially. Um, and it's incredibly timely with things that are currently happening in our own country, where some of this has to deal with, again, the Pope overseeing everything, and especially Rome. Um, so I will say I was pleasantly surprised with this movie. It was one that going into it, I wasn't sure how I, how receptive I would be to it, essentially, because it's not yeah. necessarily something that normally I would rush out to go see. Um, I will say that there are certain performances in this film that are getting attention that I totally understand why there are other performances that I don't necessarily align with. Now, I don't think they're bad performances by any means, but when I start to see some of the lists of some of these um, potential predictions for the awards, um, I don't necessarily agree with some of them, but again, it's a weaker year and conclave is a film that I think will be, um, one that will be a crowd pleaser. Like, I think that yes. when people see this movie, they'll be like, oh, wow, what a, what a great piece of filmmaking. And um, I'm interested to see how well it performs. I'm interested to see if this is something that people are going to want to see in the theaters. Like, is this going to be the one where, I mean, not, this is, this is a crazy example, but it's like everything everywhere all at once was like the sleeper. It came in and it made like a hundred million dollars on like a shoestring yeah. budget. Conclave probably also doesn't have a very big budget. And I'm curious on how well it does with the subject matter with actors that we know. I mean, Ray Fine, Stanley Tucci, John Lithgow, right. Isabella Rossellini, like really great known performers, veteran actors. If people come out in droves to see a movie like this, that some people seem interested in. Um, but I was surprised with how much I did enjoy this movie. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I think the, the box office side of that is very interesting too. It's, um, I don't, you know, now that the culture is shifting a little bit with what is theater watchable and what might not be for some people is very subjective. And, there are I do think people should see this movie in theaters if they have the time and money, but I can also see this doing a second wave of big success on a streamer. Like on if this goes on Netflix in a couple months before award season, a lot of people will appeal to this, I think. This is a very good like stay at home nighted movie to watch. Um that being said, I still think that it has its moments in a theater enjoyed with people where you are experiencing a lot of details being uncovered as the film goes on. And I was fortunate to be in a group of people reacting to that at the same time. And I, I thought that was a nice piece of, you know, that's something you want to share with movie making, but um, yeah, I don't know how this might do at the box office. I definitely want to say burger was not concerned with it, it being a box office movie. Yeah, I agree. You know, like there was another interview I saw with Ray Fiennes and what really appealed to him with this movie was that the words were jumping off the page to him on his internal conflict, which we should definitely talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but he was so interested in like playing this character that, um, it just it jumped off the page to him and and i his character is so compelling he's my favorite character of the movie there's Me other too. very interesting people yeah. but i was this was like a very strong character piece for him that i feel like we haven't gotten in a little while just some of the scripts that he's had and i think he's he's great in everything i just think this was deeper intellectually than some of the other stuff he's done i definitely agree and, with you yeah. i think that that i will say Regardless, I, I think it's going to get nominated for an, a, a bunch of awards. And I do agree yeah. with what you're saying. I, I don't necessarily, I don't think it was within Edward Berger's thinking of like, oh, I wonder if we're going to profit from this movie. I mean, it, it was only a $20 million budget, but I do think that if they profit, great. If not, it's more of like, again, that awards pundit sort of thing um, where trying to get recognition for his actors and, and for this overall story that is, is compelling. Um, I think that, Based on what I have seen this year, I again, this is based on what I have seen thus far. I'd be shocked if Ray Fine didn't win for best actor, in my opinion, for an Oscar. Yes, wow. I think that I think that there is definitely a case to be made with with some of that internal conflict, which we'll get into, yeah. and just how much of this is based in 
the mentality and the and the um, morality of his character in terms of understanding the scope of what this means when a pope dies and and what comes with it and <clears throat> having all these political aspects sort of challenging against one another while at the same time he there's so much mystery behind all of that and i think yeah. that so much of the story um and i i apologize if i'm butchering the writer's name peter uh strahan i think it is um he's done some scripts that i've actually really liked he's done some other scripts <clears throat> that i'm not a huge fan of like other films that i've seen but i do think that what Ray Fine is given in this movie, he really propels the the story forward. And I think that agree agreeing with what you said, Zach, Cardinal Lawrence as a character is one that you're just so compelled every single time you're watching this movie. Like you want more with his character. Um and I love the relationship between his character and um Bellini. Yeah. Who's played by Stanley Tucci. Two just great acting powerhouses that are that are so consistent in their work like in, in every single beck and turn you know what i mean in their careers like everything that these guys do is great and i think with burger's direction and the sort of the way that this story goes i would be surprised if he's at least not in the top two or three for best actor at the academy awards i think it's a fair it's a fair claim like this this it's hard to pick five right now like five actors but he he makes a very strong case to be included in that list with this movie. I, I don't know if I have like a winner off the top of my head in the Academy Awards, but I would be pretty shocked if he was left off of this list, given what has come out so far this year. Um, I'd also like to mention, too, with your how you were talking about the screenwriters based off of um, a book by Robert Harris as well. So I think it's good that it was based on some source material with um not source material but a novel an existing novel um that probably helped enrich their backstories for each of the characters as well and it probably i have to read the book i'm interested now but it probably gives better inner reflection of lawrence's perspective and internal thinking in the book than you can obviously not get on screen mm. so i have to imagine that rafe did a dive of that thinking with his character um but yeah i think we should go into like his thinking now and like how his reflection has been but um the first act i think we're gonna get into spoilers too so i think we should mention yes that. spoilers but... ahead if you guys haven't seen Conclave <laughs> yet but we're yeah. gonna dive into the story so yes yeah so i think um with the first half of the movie probably less than a half there is that mysticism where they talk about the doubt in his mind of being involved with the Catholic church. He's talking about leaving the church, um, especially being a part of this process. He's like, I don't know if this is something that I should be a part of. And it's not that he's necessarily doubting his faith, he says, but it's that he's doubting the people around him. And then the rest of the story is kind of centered on the corruption and the mudslinging that these people are willing to do just so they can make a power play for the Pope role, which I really love. And because Rafe is like the moral compass of the story, he encounters like all these different things. People are trying to undermine him. There's thoughts that he might become Pope and that kind of thing. So I, there's like a lot, that would weigh on a person, especially holding like one of the highest positions in the world for a lot of people. I think it's like really good at raising stakes in the movie. Um, you can feel the weight of this decision, like because it is all based around the decision of the Pope, it's a very big, heavy lifting um, plot point that weighs on these people and burdens these people. And then you feel weighed down because of it. So I think that was like very strong with the mudslinging aspect. So that's why I kind of alluded to like, it feels like a political drama. Like you could replace this with the candidacy for president and it would be almost the same. A hundred percent. And you, you know. get, you get the only difference between that and something like it, um, it did have shades of, uh, I don't know if you've seen this film or you feel similarly, uh, the eyes of March. 
I have to see that stuff. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it reminds me a lot of of the sort of oh oh the Clooney and Gosling yes. one. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I have seen that. It has a yeah. very similar sort of pace to it. I feel mm. and uh, that driving, but which again that that's a that's a presidential that's a film about two presidential candidates. Um, with this though, you have you have four very legitimate throughout the film. You have four very legitimate um, people going for this 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 pope ship i don't know if that's exactly how you'd say it yeah, yeah but um you have stanley tucci's bellini you have lucian um samadhi's adayama uh who represents the african um sort of side of it bellini also with stanley tucci's character he's a character that's really compelling in this movie because he claims that he doesn't want this position yeah and then as certain things start to happen he's like he gets upset with the way the Cardinal Lawrence is reacting to things be and right. the way that this sort of political system is happening throughout these elections, because he's like, well, you know, like we can't allow any of these other people to get in or everything that we've worked on and built for the last 40 years with this liberal agenda of the, of the past Pope is going to be no more. If, if, right. if someone like Tucci isn't put in, even though he doesn't want it, there's nobody else that's getting the votes even relatively close to even get there. Yes. Um, and then you have John Lithgow's uh, Cardinal Tremblay. And then you also have uh, someone we were talking about before we started recording. My quiet MVP, obviously, besides Ray Fine, is Sergio Castellito's um, Cardinal Tedesco. Yeah. Who, I've never seen this guy before. I, I'm curious. I'm looking at his IMDb now. I don't know if he's been in a lot of um, American films. Something tell he, you know, it's, he was in Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. I wonder who he played oh, wow. in that. But he everything else his dad or something. Everything yeah. else he's done uh is very much in, in Italian work um uh for foreign language and he he just draws so much attention to himself in this movie. Yeah. In the best way. I mean, he's such a talk about a, again a corrupt sort of different mentality of this guy going for pope but has so much support behind him. And he's this vape smoking, bearded, like majestic sort of like guy. And you have all these four different versions that are all cardinals. They're all gunning for this position. And they're all so different with Ray Fine's character, Cardinal Lawrence, directly in the middle of it. Yeah. And it really does create that. The, the election scenes, because I think we go through, what is it, five or six elections? It might even be more something like that yeah, yeah 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 and um you need the i think it was 72 votes to officially become appointed pope mm -hmm. and it takes so many things and we'll get into it what eventually gets us there but that that mixed in with the scandal scandals that we yes. get throughout yeah. the film makes it really compelling like that was for me i i thought this movie started a little slower than i wanted it to yeah it wasn't until we really and and that wasn't even like you were talking about like first half like i think it maybe took about 20, 25 minutes for me to like start really getting enamored with this story. But then when it yeah. picks up, it's relentless. Like, and you feel it and throughout all the scandals and the things we get with some of these Cardinals, like you see it sort of play out in real time and the impact that that has on, on Cardinal Lawrence and, and what that means for him and his own mentality going forward, which you've already discussed, like this guy already doesn't believe in what, the catholic mentality stands for anymore and he feels the weight of that and he feels yeah. like he's not the right person to be representative of what this position of power and the most famous person in the world stands for he doesn't believe he's the person to be appointing it or be running this sort of thing and um if it wasn't for him some things could get really out of hand really quickly as we see sort of unfold in the movie right yeah i i think like um I'm trying to think of what else what else to talk about with oh and tedesco to go back to tedesco i liked how he was a very smug overconfident like almost narcissistic person he's like i'm the perfect person for this position why aren't you all siding with me you know that was his mentality and um john lithgow is like the sleuth like he's quiet and then he has his moments of interjection and then he's like scheming in the background with his scandals and stuff like that so i i also think like um lawrence was very john snowish for like half the movie because he's like i don't want it i don't want it. <laughs> you know like he's he's definitely reserved and 
there's that question that he gets about three quarters of the way through. Like if there's so many scandals out there, like who else is going to do it? And then he's like, the, I don't want this to fall on me because, because, and then he's like, if I'm having doubts about this system of the Catholic church, how am I possibly going to be the Pope? You know, how am I supposed to lead the world version of the Catholic church? Yeah. If I'm having doubts about that. So I, I thought that was insane. I thought the positions where they put um, the candidates in and then the dirt that they find on them was definitely the most interesting with kind of what I was saying too, with the first half um, I wasn't expecting as much dirt to come up. Like I knew that people were going to try and uh, manipulate their way into uh, a position. Like I didn't necessarily expect like a murder to happen, but more like, um, how are they going to weasel their way in to a situation to be the favorite? So um, even the the trailer, you kind of think that the was the Pope killed or something, or it was very mysterious the way that he was dying. And there's a lot of like in the trailer, people are like looking over their shoulder and like, who can we trust? Like mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So you almost wonder where the story is going at certain points. And I liked that a lot. I liked how Berger can <clears throat> shift the story and the tone a little bit to different perspectives and how crucial it was to follow a like mysterious drama. I like that. Yeah, and the battle of the depths of mentality that these sorts of positions of power sort of are emblem emblematic of. Like I think yeah. that that's a really good aspect of what Berger is able to do here with like it's like faith versus doubt right like it's like oh like yeah. all these characters have so much faith in in in, in their own religious faith and, and faith in their system and, and this is the way it's supposed to be versus right. lawrence presenting that doubtful aspect of it throughout the whole entire movie which the film is is shaped around is having so much doubt in in this system and not believing that um his faith is following through for him anymore you have that progress versus tradition it's like stanley tucci's bellini is like no, we need to progress forward. Like, and if we go, if Tedesco winds up winning this, they're going to go back to this old tradition that never made sense for anybody. Yeah. And I love that you have that struggle throughout the film. Yeah. That sort of we versus they that like resonates throughout yeah. the movie the whole time. And right. I agree with you. I think that that's where you start to see the weaseling in and out of certain characters. And it's weird with, cause um, with Bellini's character, it's one that the switch just, happens right like you're not expecting tucci to react the way he is and then after i think it's the second election he like starts um sort of accusing lawrence of yeah right you're you you're standing in the way of this it's like he's not really like he yeah he's he's only worth another 10 votes and he's only coming up now a little bit behind you because people don't believe in you maybe because you say you don't want it who knows but tedesco is somebody that's very um convict he has so much conviction in the fact that he wants this position yeah. like you said he comes off as like he's like a jester essentially like he's the jester right. of the catholic faith at this point and in this movie yeah um and i think it's i think it's really interesting to see how these people that represent these different sectors of the world but are representing roman catholic faith are people like you're seeing it mm. play out that they're still people like we are I think right. that's a really interesting concept that Berger sort of plays with throughout the movie. Yeah. And I, I was also going to say too, with, um, you know, uh, by the end, almost the very end, there's like a bombing that happens outside of the Vatican city. And I liked how we didn't see the bombing itself because it wasn't really relevant to the story. Someone else commented that this is like the 12 angry men of the Roman Catholic church and just how it's very like, inclusive of only these people in this room they're literally locked in this room deliberating who to pick for pope but so that being said the bombing happens that's something you would usually see like on camera in other movies but they choose to frame it and burger chooses to frame it as like look like this is happening outside while we're here arguing over petty stuff like by the end of the movie, they're in that one room, isolated, completely surrounded by darkness, lit and lit by just their this skylight or something. It was just an effect where you're showing that these pool of people are isolated and they are supposed to make the correct choice in this situation because they have to put 
this moment to be bigger than themselves. Like their, their egos have been driving their own self selfish interest mm -hmm. the entire way up until that point. And they have to finally be like, look, we have to figure this out. There's, we can't, we have to put our egos aside. The world is doing its own thing poorly outside of the city. So we have to come together and figure this out. Um, and then kind of to go off of the other themes of the story, there's a great, there was one of my favorite quotes of a lot of movies that I've, I've really had dialogue stick out to me. And there was one, I think that Lawrence says, it says, if there was only certainty and no doubt, there would be no mystery and therefore no need for faith. So he's kind of like, look, if there was certainty, if we knew there was a God, if we knew that these people were perfectly clean, like clean or void of anything, like there would be no need for this faith in anything else. Like mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't ha have to be here in this position and that kind of thing and arguing in that sense and whatever. So when they finally put their trust in the final Pope that they elect and they still find out that he has a history that conflicts with the Catholic interests, they, he accepts it. I think, I don't think everyone else knows what happens by the end, but, yeah. I, but he accepts it because he's like, look, this is a rare occurrence. Someone that I have no clue was a real Catholic priest at the very beginning. He just wanders into this council mm -hmm. and they don't know if he's legit or not from <clears throat> um, his country, but he has been the most reserved, the most poised, the most, humble in that situation and then they decide to elect him just off of that and just off of their merit it has nothing to do with understanding his background so he kind of has that moment of i didn't even have to know his past to judge him as a decent person mm -hmm. like it because then he's it's still that <clears throat> suspending the okay do i choose the conservative ideals of the church which i've been against this whole time or do i choose a person who is fit for the office based on how they've conducted themselves like yeah. thus far. So it was really it's cool. definitely based in, in the character and, and yeah. um, that particular priest gets their moment in that, like you said, that dimly lit scene, which is, is a terrific scene after the bombing, like you said, in Vatican city. Um, I am curious, like on the twist that happens. Yeah. Did you feel like it was something that was necessary? Cause to me it wasn't. I understood what they were going for. Um, and I think it's a shock moment. Like there's definitely like, I mean, you saw it in a packed theater at Montclair. So I'm curious if there was like, like that sort of like, cause you could feel it and you could hear it when something like that kind of happens, because it's something that comes out of nowhere. Like, again, you know that this, this character comes in early on in the film and there's a mystery to him and, you see how they play around with it. And it's always lingering in the background and there's still right. interactions between his character and Cardinal Lawrence, but the actual effectiveness of getting that twist and, and, and another sort of, I mean, you don't want to call it, like you said, it's not corrupt, but it's something that the Catholic church obviously fundamentally Opposes. disagrees yeah. with. Yeah. Um, but while at the same time, Cardinal Lawrence has to deal with what came before because the Pope is aware of this before yeah. he dies, the previous Pope. So what did you think about the twist in general um, as something that you, did you think it elevated the story? Did you think it diminished the story or do you think it was just like, like in my opinion, I was mm -hmm. like, it was, I, it was compelling to the fact that it was something that was shocking to me. Right. I just didn't think the story necessarily completely needed it. I think what they were coming across at the end would have been a good enough ending for me, but I'm curious on what your thoughts are. On yeah. It. No, I, I thought, um, I think it would, it elevated the story in the sense of, um, okay, there's nobody is perfect, you know, like everybody, or like in, in the Catholic church's perspective, yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect in their perspective. So I think it's like, that was the message of it. And that was the point of, you know, we're trying to elect the, the best person. Well, that, that's also like the controversy behind like do people believe in the Pope being a perfect person closest to God or mm -hmm. are the, is there some flaw in, in that person? So that they kind of ex extended that, um, that, that opinion of with each of them have their own like dirty little secret for the, the Catholic church. This was just his, 
Um, but that being said, the reason that he settles on him is that he he had had no like wrongdoing in the sense of like a human effort. Like there was no mudslinging, there was no assault, there was no um treachery, like bribery. There was nothing like um devious, I guess. Uh so he accepts it by the end that okay, there isn't any perfect person in the world in the mm-hmm. eyes of the church. So we have to make a compromise and and he is still probably the best person for the job mm-hmm. in this room. So I think that's kind of like what they were getting across. Yeah, yeah. And in my theater, everyone was like kind of laughing because they were like, oh my gosh, he just has to keep dealing with stuff. Cause like he, yeah, yeah. cause it's literally like, <laughs> holy crap, man. He's, he's like, I got it. I got the perfect person. We all agree on it. We all voted. We're good. We announced it. He's about to walk out and I find out this one message from the other country and he's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> he's like, are you serious? So everyone was like, holy crap in my theater. What he has to go through. Yeah. yeah and just the decision that he has to make and he ends up living with his decision. And honestly, he made the right choice given who was in the room, you know, like, yeah. but then there is like the thought of what would come after, of course, <laughs> you know, like what, yeah. how would the public response to something like that which i kind of appreciate though because he kind of sticks to his guns and opposing the catholic ideology a little bit without losing his faith which i liked you know yeah he talks about how how it's a decision that he feels that if god made him a certain way yeah that's what he that is what he has to deal with and that's and he's accepting of it and i I don't want to give it away because it's a big thing um but no i i think that i think that's a fair point i think the movie um is definitely compelling i think it's one that people should definitely check out i think the the setting and the visuals of this movie are incredible i mean when you're dealing with so much of things in in rome and and these incredible structures and the way that the the costume design is and all that stuff i think i think it's going to be nominated for a lot of awards i I I think so at the academy awards i think it's going to be one of those ones that's definitely on a lot of people's radar um, and I like how this year so far, based on the ones now, I, you got to see this at Montclair. I unfortunately missed it, but, um, Anora is, I love how like Anora and Conclave are like nowhere near the same movie. Yeah. And they're, but like, it's yeah, literally <laughs> like it, it, there's so much, um, there's so much sort of deviation between the different kinds of stories that potentially could be nominated. And those are like probably two of, if not the top two sort of front runners right now for best picture. So I think that's really interesting, um, going forward, but. I don't really have much else to say. Do you want to get into scores? Yeah, yeah. Let's get into scores. Um, your camera just died. Oh, no. Well, so. I can keep talking. And it's okay. But um, you, you give your score. You give your okay. Score. I will give my score first. Um, and I'm going to go and I'm going to give this movie a solid eight. I think it's mm-hmm. a good movie. Um, I think it's one that based on the ideology and like what the messaging is for it, I can totally understand how this could be a potential best picture winner. And I think that it's a story that is so built on the back of the direction by Berger, some terrific visuals and a masterful performance by Ray fine. And for the record, I went on goldderby.com. It's a big website for Oscar predictions and things like that. I would say about 85% of expert predictions have Rafe either one or two really with him and Adrian Brody. Those are the two. Oh wow! Right now for the brutalist, which hopefully we'll get a Cannot chance to see, to see that before yeah. uh, before Oscar time. So I'm going to give it an eight. I think it's a good movie. Um, it's just outside my top ten for the year thus far, but it's still a, it's a really it's a really great movie. Yeah, I'm going to give it an eight as well. Um, it's in my top ten or or just outside of it as well. I I really loved how much they did with this movie. Um, it was great to see Edward Berger continuing to have success and. I hope that he has a lot of success in the future. There's also something to add real quick. At the film festival, they were asking him what other projects he's working on. I was like, oh, I'm working on a movie with Colin Farrell and Tilda Swinton. Tilda, t- uh, Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. Yeah. And, um, and it's, a, it's centered around something with a gambling addiction that Colin has in like Shanghai or something like I that. I think I've heard of this. So it's called like, is it called, did he say what it was called? Mm. Oh, the ballad of a small player. Yes, that's yes. what it was. So 
I I probably butchered a little bit of the description, but that's the what I know of as of right now. You probably have something in front of you too. I have a I have a synopsis based on IMDb. Yeah. Oh, dude, I love Colin Farrell. I can't yeah, wait yeah, for yeah. This. When his past and his debts start to catch up with him, a high stakes gambler laying low in Macau encounters a kindred spirit who might just hold the key to his salvation. So it's very interesting. That is cool. And thinking of Edward with that is awesome. And Tilda is great in anything. She yes. Can, so. so um those are our scores guys hopefully you guys enjoyed our review of conclave be sure to check this movie out if you guys haven't already if you have let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on the film if you haven't let us know if you guys are anticipating this movie and you guys are excited about it if you guys can also give this video a like and subscribe to us we have the culture wave media network we plug all our stuff at the end so you guys already know we do a bunch of things in film and tv check out all our other reviews all the other things we have upcoming for you guys. We have interviews coming as well soon with some of the talent that we've gotten to work with recently, which we cannot wait for you guys to see. Also, you guys can follow us on social media. All that stuff is below me in the video. Cinema Wave, Culture Wave, all that stuff. It's there. It's in the description. Um, please share this with your friends and family if you guys are a fan of what we do. And we got a lot more stuff upcoming for you guys later uh, going into award season. Just signing off. I am Darian Scalamoni. I'm Zach Miller. And we will see you guys next time. This is The Culture.